friends, welcome to this module on web security. And in the previous module, we had looked at security in JDK, fine security in general rather, where we talked about the key pairs, we talked about the hashing, we talked about what is a uh, digital certificate, what is meant by digitally signing a thing, fine. So, that was more useful for integrity aspect, fine. All those key elements are useful even for web applications, fine. So, now we have another thing which is about security for the web applications, fine. In web applications, especially the Java based web applications, we have got various ways, various mechanisms of securing our components in the web application, fine. By securing, what is being, uh, what we mean here is, oh, we would like to have certain URLs being secured, okay, certain resources. When I say URL, it refers to a resource. So, we have certain resources which have to be uh, protected from use by unauthorized person. They cannot be accessed by unauthorized persons. Oh, when I say unauthorized persons, that would mean there has to be some mechanism where a person can be identified and that is what we call as authentication. So, authentication is nothing but a process by which the client can be identified, fine. We have an identity for a client, fine. And of course, there are other things, okay. A client or a group of clients are authorized, fine. A group of clients will say, oh, they have a particular role. So, we have a concept of a role also. Fine. So, we can have roles, fine. We can have, uh, we have roles being there and each and every person should be having a particular role, fine. So, person is identified to have a particular kind of a role. A person has its authentication, fine. A person would be, would have to be authenticated. So, when a person is authenticated, his role is also being identified. Oh, now, who does this? Who will manage the role of the person or oh, what is this role of the person? Is it the application? Oh, not necessary. A application has its own set of components uh, where a application developer, he is not supposed to worry about oh, who is authorized and who is not authorized. There are very little places where he may think, okay, this particular component needs to be available only to someone having a role of an administrator. Okay, there might be only such few components, fine, which are role based, fine. And most of the places, it may be where a, a particular application is being deployed, fine, rather than someone from the application side determine who is who, how to find out, how to authenticate, the mechanism of authentication or that authentication mechanism, fine, if we recollect is also something which can be taken as a responsibility by our containers, fine, the Java E containers. So, even a web container, every web container would have its own mechanism of authentication, okay, rather than authentication about managing the roles and persons, determining who is who, fine, having a valid list of who are the valid, who are the users and some mechanism of what should be the mechanism for authentication, fine. For example, the information or authentication relation, uh, related information, very commonly we have something like we have got the uh, things called uh, username and password, that is a very, uh, that is one kind of a mechanism for authenticating and finding out, oh, if this is so and so person or not. So, such things, managing these people, right, managing, okay, the user users, the managing all the users is something which can be done by container, fine, or oh, this is my user list. So, fine, different servers, different web uh, servers would have their own mechanisms to manage this. For example, in case of Tomcat, there are uh, again various options available. One of those options is where you could say, okay, uh, we can specify all the users who are there in a kind of a file. It is an XML file called Tomcat users dot XML. So, you could update the Tomcat users dot XML to contain list of valid roles, okay. So, you have entries for the roles and then creating entries for the users where you will say, okay, this user has this name 
and that is his password and this user has these kind of the roles. A list of roles can be assigned to a user or this user or oh, he is having all these roles. So, that way a file can be used for in case of Tomcat, uh, Tomcat is using such a mechanism fine. Each and every container would have its own mechanism of managing it fine. Now, authentication fine, authenticating would then become the responsibility of container fine, but how to how to have authentication being carried out fine. It would be done by container, but how should it be done? What kind of interface should be given fine. So, we got various kinds of options and this is the information which would be given in our deployment descriptor fine. We have for our web application, we got a deployment descriptor that web dot xml file or oh, within the web dot xml file you could make an entry which says okay, whenever authentication is required when it needs that yes someone is required I, I need to know that who is who is a current client fine and fine. So, to in order to determine who the current user is who the current client is fine I would like you to use a particular kind of a authentication mechanism. So, in web dot xml we got entries to find out who that person is. Fine. So, we got some entries in web.xml in the deployment descriptor for example, we have a entry called login config fine. So, we can put login config. So, we have a tag called login config which has uh, authorization mechanism. So, it has auth mode fine and the auth mode you can say oh auth authentication should be done using it has to be a form based authentication very commonly it would be a com uh, form based authentication which is more common fine. In case of a form based authentication fine the application developer would be able to create design his own page for login fine. He is able to design his own page for login and he also has to design another page in case the login fails he needs to have another page. So, these would be created as mostly as JSP files fine. So, there are some requirements which are there for this JSP file, but the kind of entry which goes in the web dot xml is oh, we have a login config fine auth mode and we will say form fine. The other auth modes for example, you can say basic. Now, if you say basic you do not have to do anything. If you just say basic just give a real name fine. If you are saying basic it is actually the browser which will pop up the which will pop up a small window asking for login id and password username and password. You do not have to design any form or anything, but if you have said auth mode is form okay, in that case you need to also specify login form config. You have a inner uh, tag called login form config. In the login form config you mentioned two entries one will be an entry login form page fine and login uh, login form page and login error page. So, we have got login form page to mention to link to a JSP for example, you can say slash and start uh, you start with a slash here and put your location within the web application where you got your JSP. For example, you can say slash login dot JSP fine or you and, and that is one entry and you will have the login error page where you could have for example, you can say slash login error dot JSP. So, if there is a login error fine the page which has to show with the error message and whatever else fine you can determine what it is fine you can create your own uh, login error page and that should be mentioned with the login error page. So, that is a kind of entry which goes if you want a form based authentication fine. So, that is about okay, what is the mechanism used for authentication fine. Once you have decided that this is the method used for authentication of course, those components if it is a form based you will have to create those two components also those two JSPs basically fine. So, that is one aspect. So, we have one aspect of having a what is the method of login authentication fine. So, authentication the login how it is to be done fine. So, this is one and then what we have is uh, okay. So, now we have uh, okay. So, this is one aspect. Now, another thing is you would like to protect certain URLs. This URL is the one which requires a particular role. So, we can do all this just by declaration within our web dot xml fine. It is all declarative we do not have to write any nothing in Java code at all fine. It is all declarative. So, we can say okay, oh, I want to have some kind of a security constraint 
fine. So, you can put your security constraint requirement on the URLs. So, what we have is a tag called security constraint. Within the security constraint, fine, you could uh, you could put a tag, uh, there is an inner tag to have a group of URLs, fine. To have a group of URLs, we have uh, web resource collection. We have a web resource collection tag having an inner tag called web resource name and URL pattern. So, a web resource name and URL pattern that creates a whole set of URLs, right? It is a collection of URLs. So, web resource collection is one such thing. So, one of the things inside our uh, web dot uh, XML, fine, within the security constraint is the web resource collection. So, we, we can have several such web resource collection, fine, but then this is one security constraint. So, in this security constraint, Okay, I want a particular role only for this set of, for this kind, for this particular set of resources. Fine, it's one set of resources, another set of resources, a set of resources having a name and a URL pattern. Fine, and then oh, I would like that to have a particular kind of a role. One more thing, the roles which you want to have, all that has to be listed. Fine, in the web.xml, all the valid roles have to be listed. So, they have to be listed independently, they are not within the security constraint, fine. So, they would be outside the security constraint. In web.xml, you have something called security role and within security role and slash security role, there is an inner tag called role name and where you just give the role name. So, create such security role entries for every role which is available to you, which is going to be used in your web.xml file. So, we have the role, okay. Now, we are asking that a specific role should be used for this particular set of resources, fine. So, we have a, fine. So, we have a, a tag for specifying that which role is necessary. So, we have this, uh, we have this entry which goes in a web.xml to specify that yes, this particular role are required. So, we have auth constraint within auth constraint, we will say role name and give the roles, the list of roles. So, you can put a multiple role name entries and say, okay, these are the roles which is required for, uh, which have been authenticated for this particular, uh, which are allowed to use this particular set of resources. Now, if you have your form based authentication, right. So, I said oh, for a form based authentication, you will be creating a JSP page. But there are a few requirements for this JSP page because the authentication is being done by the container. It is not the application who is doing it. The application developer is simply creating an interface. So, in this interface which the application developer creates, he needs to have a few, he needs to have a, uh, there is a specific, there are specific requirements of this. You may design whatever way you like, fine, but then it should have a form entry, it would be HTML kind of entry which has a form tag. So, in the form tag, you would have action equal to there a specific value is there which would be used by container. So, we have j underscore security underscore check. So, action equal to should always be j security check. Again, the input tags, the when we put the input tags, uh, input type equal to text fine, you will have a username. So, that username input type equal to text, the username for accepting the username, we have the name equal to that this tag input tag will have name equal to j underscore username, that is one requirement. And then if we have the, uh, uh, we, we also will have a password field. Now, for the password field, you should always keep, okay, the, the password field normally will say input type equal to password fine. The name equal to, in this case, the name should always be j underscore password. So, these three values, fine, these are specific to any web container, whatever web container you may be having, fine. You always design your JSP with these three things. The action of the form, okay, most of the time you will say method equal to post, fine, to keep it more secure, but the action should have, action should have j security check, input for user name should be j underscore user name and input for password should be j underscore password, fine. So, once this is done, fine. So, this is one more requirement which you have for the JSPs which you develop for, for the purpose. So, your uh, login page, fine, Lo uh, 
login page fine login page config uh, fine within that login uh, page config you have your login uh, page so in the login page the which you have the jsp which you develop should have these things these things fine these are the constraint it should have fine and then we have one more thing uh, now continuing further what we have is we have uh, uh, okay the next requirement would be yes you would have your data that yes within this the whatever data is there fine that data needs to be authenticated uh, that need data many times yes you have certain set of urls for which you would have that yes this particular data whatever the data part which is coming that content even in transit if someone catches hold of it should not be able to make out i want that to be confidential fine you have some https fine you will have to enable the https things fine https would actually require that key pair what we had talked earlier fine the a key pair which for which uh, a key is managed on the there's a key pair for which the public key for your server would be available to the client and the private key is used here when they have a mechanism for exchange of the data so fine it would use the ssl fine so there would be a ssl uh, which would be used for communication and so i have certain set of urls for which the content has to be transported on a uh, in such a way that it is it has to be a confidential one fine so for that again what you have to do you don't have to do much things in your application what you need to do is in the web.xml file oh you have the web uh, sec, uh, you have the security constraint fine that same thing security constraint again has those set of uh, it has the set of resources by saying uh, 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 web resource collection so we have the web resource collection having uh, the inner tags to manage a resource collection using the url pattern giving a name and url pattern so you have such a thing but then you don't add uh, you you may have auth constraint also that yes this is since it is confidential maybe it may also require that it must be available to a specific roles only it may or may not require roles if it doesn't require a role fine you would not have a auth constraint but you would have a user data constraint the user data the content here that has a constraint that yes this needs to have a transportation which would be confidential fine so transport mechanism has to be confidential so you have a tag there for specifying that the transport fine the transport has to be confidential so that can be done here fine so you can put in web xml and specify so this you can see this is all very declarative and yes using just the declarations you are able to manage security here fine the, so this is one aspect yes we have a declarative way of specifying our security specifying the roles which are available fine so all those things are available right and then uh, so first th so this is one aspect fine now uh, what you have is you have also been able to, so what are the things we have done we have been able to specify a set of roles but before that container has the uh, responsibility of doing all the authentication fine now container has done the authentication but it's a servlet here or it's some servlet here which would like to know who is the current user so for that yes now we have something in our program fine in within our servlet within our any of our java components fine okay uh, there is some component and it would like to know whether I, uh, if it has been authenticated uh, whether it whether the proper person is there or not right the uh, the person who has been authenticated he is he uh, what kind of role he is having right does he have a role of a particular kind or not so if you want to determine such thing we have in the serv http servlet request this is all http so in http servlet request we have this method called get uh, is user in role fine we have the method called is user in role where you can specify a role name and get a boolean value true or false so whether the current user logged in user has a particular role or not you may not like to know uh, you may so one is you normally would like to use this role based things but sometimes you might like to know the name of the user or oh, who is that remote user if you are interested in knowing who that remote user is in the http servlet request we even have a method called get remote user to give us the name of the 
user. If no authentication has been carried out, oh, it can return a null, it would return a null value if no authentication was done. So, if it is returning a null value, fine, you could send back, you could send redirect and say, okay, uh, fine, I send back, I send it back and give a send error and say, okay, 401, fine. So, fine, you are uh, unauthorized. So, we have those kind of uh, response codes so that it would force a authentication from the client if he has not been authenticated. Fine. So, that is something which you can do from within your uh, servlet or within any of your Java components on the server side. Fine. Within your Java component, another thing, uh, okay, we can find out who that remote user is, but I would also like to know how the authentication was carried out or oh, if it is basic authentication, maybe it is not so secure. We have form based authentication almost similar, but we even can have client certificate being used as authentication. Fine. In that uh, auth mode, tag, you could have said client certificate. So, has he been uh, uh, authenticated by using client certificate? If he has been authenticated by using a client certificate or which, which kind of authentication was used, fine. So, for that HTTP servlet request even has a method called get auth type, which returns a string. So, that string would be saying, okay, it is basic or it is form, it is auth cert or it is a message digest, fine. Which kind, particular kind of authentication has been carried out that can always be determined by the application any java component on the any uh, java component on our server side so server has to do the uh, authentication and all that information from its servlet request is able to it's able to make it available to our java components whosoever has that. so so mainly the servlet or even it could be even a jsp who is trying to use that information Fine. So, this information is available plus uh, we have that get remote user method and there is an old earlier method also called uh, get principal. That uh, method get principal returns an object of principal. Now, you may wonder what is that principal? A princip this method has been there since the beginning of servlet API. That was an old way of keeping it has nothing much more than having a name the, uh, this get principal returns principal which is uh, available in java.security package and the principal has nothing but a method called get name so it's just nothing much more than keeping a name only so it's almost equivalent of using a get remote user method fine so get remote fine these are some of the methods which we have available on our for our programmatic things. So, programmatically if you want to check anything, yes we have Java components getting all these kind of methods for us, fine. And, uh, okay. and uh, so, so, this is one aspect of our web security. Ana so, now one more thing uh, for our web security, what we will also need is we need our, we need to have uh, uh, transport requirement was, we have transportation which is going to be confidential. If transport has to be confidential, we will have to set up our SSL, fine. In order to set up SSL, yes, we will have to update our uh, on the server. In, now, this would again depend on from server to server, fine. So, for Tomcat, yes, there is a server.xml and you will have to make entries there to say, yes, I need SSL. You will have to ensure that SSL is enabled and it has been uh, enabled for the server side, but one important thing, what you need here is a certificate, fine. You will need a key value pair, uh, a key pair to be generated for our server, fine. And this key pair, fine, uh, the public key of that should be available with the clients. The server would keep the private key, it would have a key store. Fine. So, it should be managing a key store. So, you will have to be using here again that tool for, you will have to use the key tool, fine, which is able to manage a key store for us. So, you can manage key store, fine. So, for your application, you create your, so for your web application, you create a key pair, fine. So, so this application uses a particular key pair, fine. And then that could be actually specified, that has to be known to the server how the server would use it, fine, and server would be able to specify what is that key pair, uh, what is the uh, public key, uh, what is the, uh, fine, the server should be able to specify to use a particular alias from that particular key store, fine, and we have 
the client fine the clients who should be able to authenticate now see that key uh, key pair many times what uh, see what would be required here is the key pair which you generate fine it has to be something which is endorsed fine the certificate which you use in your key store so your key store should normally have certificates which are available on the which are signed by authorized agencies fine because uh, the public keys the public keys only of the you have the certificates certificates are nothing but public keys so you got your certificates available globally fine in most of the softwares it's available only for the certifying authorities fine when we have a certificate being signed okay these certifying authorities have their own self signed certificate that's one but then there is actually a chain of certificates if something is being signed a certifying authority has his own sub certifying authorities that sub certifying authority sign can also be signing you may be having a certificate which is not signed by the certifying authority directly but by a sub certifying authority so if there is a sub certifying authority the sub certifying uh, the certificate which you have is having actually a chain of certificates so we don't just have a certificate uh, entry in a key store would have a chain of certificates fine so you have a, a certificate chain in the form of yes we have a certificate for the certificate which is uh, for example certificate issued to us by a sub certifying authority but that has so it would have the certificate of that sub certifying authority which has been signed by the actual certifying authority and for that certifying authority we have a self signed certificate so we have a root there is you know at the root there will be one self signed certificate now whosoever is the self signed certificate that's at the top okay that certificates public that certificate must be publicly available to us and we must have it as a trusted certificate in our key store if we have a key store where this is available as a trusted certificate only then it can work so you will have a lot of task here to set up a certificate fine because many times maybe you don't want to have the cost of having a self signed uh, having a certificate from a certifying authority because yes in order to maintain a certificate there is some annual recurring cost associated with the certificates available issued by those certifying authorities so instead of using those you may be interested in just generating your own key uh, just generating an or your own uh, key pair fine so if you are generating your own key pair key tool can be used and then in that case you have your own self signed certificate but this public the public key should then you will have a task of distributing this self signed certificate even to all your clients otherwise they would not be able to fine they will have to manage it within their browser the browsers also manage their key stores fine so this certificate will have to be managed in the browser so for that yes you will in the key store you, in the key tool we have those commands for actually exporting a certificate also if there is a key entry you can export a certificate out of your key store of out of any key store by using a key tool command so key tool minus export is available fine and on the other side if there is a key store being used by an application fine the application can use the imp key tool minus import fine to in order to add a, in order to add import certificate in order to add a certificate entry into his key store so key store management can be done by using that key tool fine so you will need a lot of those things if you are interested in having a ssl you'll need to do lot of exercise on that front also fine so fine so yes uh, security on website involves is quite uh, is, is it's quite involved if you are interested in ssl fine uh, in security on the transit but if you are just interested in securing some urls things are quite simple there it's it's simple and can be done by just using our uh, declarations in the web.xml files fine we have the web xml file having uh, those fine just uh, you're putting the security constraint fine you have a login uh, login constraint security con constraint and you need to remember that you will be using a login uh, uh, we have the security role and mention all the logins which are available now another point is you may have created certain servlets fine and these servlets 
have been created by someone else and you are just simply trying to use them. Those servlets also use a particular role. Now, when we have servlet using a specific role, okay, for that role, fine, the role which is used there may not be exactly the role which we have here in our current server. So, on server, on our web server, web container, the web container uses a particular set of roles which has been configured, which it has been fine, which has been configured, but we have on our server side, we have our Java component which would like to use certain roles, but they have a different name. They, they have an equivalent role here. There may be a one to one role. Fine. So, if there is a one to one mapping, someone says this is admin. Uh, on the other side, on the, serv the servlet or the Java component which you are trying to use, the, uh, so you have mainly the servlet. So, on a servlet if, uh, which you are trying to use, if you got a, the servlet is trying to use a role called manager, whereas here there is a role within your uh, container, the role is understood as admin. So, maybe here it is admin in the container, but that admin is same as manager for our servlet. Now, what do I do? or do I recompile? I do not have the code for the servlet. I am interested in using that servlet component, but I, I do not have the code with me or do I recompile and ask everyone to deploy it again. Fine. I am uh, I have coded with one, but this is this application is being deployed in different different places. At different places equivalent of the manager which is used in my servlet. In my servlet I am uh, I'm doing the check is user in role and I am saying manager fine, but some places it is admin, someone says administrator, fine, someone may have a different name altogether, fine, but they are all equivalent of what is manager for my servlet. So, now what do I do? How do I use that servlet? I cannot have that servlet being compiled and I do not, uh, uh, it would be a uh, you know big maintenance task to managing a different servlet which has been compiled with different values for that particular role for each different places where I have deployed it. So, rather than that, there has to be some mechanism in my serv uh, in within my serv uh, within my container itself. So, within my web.xml. So, within the web.xml, we can where we make a servlet entry, we can ask the, we can put an entry to let the servlet know that yes. Uh, to, uh, to let the container know that if the servlet is look in the in the servlet API, if, if the servlet API looks for this particular role, you should understand that actually this is the particular role. Fine. So you will say, okay, there is a servlet role which is manager because that's what my servlet understands. But you have a uh, link role. Fine. So you have a ro role link. It is linked to admin on this particular on this particular. Uh, deployment fine. So, you have your application deployed at different places. When it is being deployed fine, in the servlet, the servlet is saying okay, I will be using a different particular, I am not using the same, uh, I, I, I have uh, the servlet is only using a specific particular role, uh, role name and I will uh, in different places in the web XML, I will have to change the admin there will have to configure and say okay. Uh, we have that manager which is used by our servlet in this application, but on our deployment here, our container does not understand manager. The equivalent of manager for our container is and I can give that fine. So, we have some entries which we can make in our uh, web.xml fine those entries let me tell you. So, we have these entries uh, which are part of web.xml and in this web.xml uh, for uh, the servlet entry within the servlet entry, we have security uh, 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 security role ref. There is an entry which is inside the servlet entry. You can say security role ref and within security role ref, you will say role name, the name which is understood by the servlet and we will say uh, role link. So, this is linked to what is the role the container understands, fine. The role which is for the container fine locally for the container this is going to be my role fine so you can have this kind of a role being uh, role linking being done where the role names differ fine so this is something which you can that's a way mechanism to have a servlet fine so you can deploy a web application even in different kinds of 
mechanism. And see, this is all very declarative, very simplified. Fine. It's only when you have to go for a, uh, you know, for SS your requirement of SSL. That's where some more task will have to be done. Otherwise, most of the things are managed just by using declarative security. It's fine. Just a declarative things. Fine. Okay. Fine. So that's what we have in this module. Thank you. 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 Thank you.